A lot of times people will come to me in my live streams or my comment section and ask me if they should start a new family or they've been feeling a little bored with their family and they want to start a new one. And you know, some people are five generations, six generations into one family's lineage. And at that point, you're almost worked your way through all of the expansion packs or you've done a, a, a significant portion of if you're playing Leprosy style that is Leprosy style by the way is you add a new expansion pack every new generation and I personally say no like don't don't start over just make sure you know do things that will keep your game fresh but um, I want to make a video on how I keep my game spiced up and fresh in The Sims 3 especially because with The Sims 3 unlike The Sims 4 there is so much content to do and stuff that probably you and I rarely ever use that is super fun to play with and super important now that's not to say there have been certain times in my eight generations because if you guys don't know at this current moment in time I have done eight generations leprosy style of one family's lineage now on one hand mama didn't raise no quitter i am not one to give up on things easily but on the other hand i think it also has to do with the way i play and the steps and precautions that i take to make the game feel fresh and not recycled so welcome to my video five things i do to make sure my sims game feels spiced up and fresh So my first recommendation to all of you is to give rotational slash switching households gameplay a try. I have notoriously done this in my Sims 3 Sunset Valley rotational play. Now I'm going to show you in just a second how to set up rotational casts. What rotational play is, is Sims 2 style play essentially. So your family will only advance when you are actively playing them and all the other families in town will not advance unless you are specifically playing them now i've kind of done some alterations and tweaks here what i've done in my sunset valley rotational play is i picked like six or seven families i put those families in a rotational cast so they will not advance unless i am actively playing them and then you know the rest of the town the rest of you know outside of the six or seven families i picked those families will advance but um until i get to said family in my rotational lineup uh, they will not advance. So it's kind of like Sims 2 style play. If you've ever played Sims 2, um, outside world does not advance. Only your Sim does. There has been some mods in recent years, namely the sims 2 story progression mod which kind of mitigates this issue where the town doesn't advance with your sim but i'm talking about vanilla sims 2 nobody advances except your actively played household so we are in game now and i'm going to show you guys how to set up a rotational cast if you are interested in doing this sort of play style to kind of keep your families fresh so First and foremost, if you want to do this, you're going to be switching between two households. Like that's just like the thing we have to establish here. If you're wanting to play more than one family, because I would say playing multiple families at the same time really does keep your Sims game pretty fresh and like makes it a whole new experience because you're playing two different family storylines at the same time. So that is what this is for. If you intend on wanting to play more than one family to kind of keep your gameplay fresh and then continue on. If you're not interested in playing more than one family, then skip to the next section of this video. Anyway, this is going to require you to have Enros story progression at the bare minimum. I have done a whole video on all of my Enros story progression settings. So do not ask that is a whole other video 45 minute video going over every single setting in detail and how it does and what it does to affect your gameplay so please go watch that this is just going to be showing how to set up rotational cast so first and foremost i'm going to just choose any random household in town i'm going to choose a single mom's household because i feel like every time i do one of these sort of videos doing mod overviews or mod whatever i always end up choosing the single moms because they're just my favorite hands down i love their storyline love to play them yeah it's going to ask me if i want to enable and raw story progression you're going to hit the check mark right here um adjust the age span yeah that's fine whatever just cl click the check mark again and then i'm going to pause my game right now so it's going to ask me about homeless sims i just delete them i don't know i don't really care so after you have loaded in your save you're going to go and click on the city hall you can also go to a computer in game but city hall i feel like it's just like everyone has a city hall but not everyone has a computer you know what i mean so 
you're going to click on city hall with nros story progression installed you're going to go nros you're going to go story progression you're going to go to cast options and then up here to add a new cast and i'm just going to click it and we can call this what you can call whatever you want but i'm going to call it rotational play because that's what this cast is going to be for i'm just going to hit enter and now down here it's going to say rotational play right there so i'm going to click on the rotational play button or the new like little cast name we just made obviously you're first and foremost going to want to make sure that cast automatic is set here to false but then right above that, you're going to want to change cast apply to household to true. And then you can just hit the check mark and it will now change that to true. All right, next up, there's gonna be a lot of things that we are about to change. So just stay with me, okay? So first and foremost, we're going to come up here to the top, career allow progression. You're going to set that to false. This will make it so your Sims don't get promotions and find new jobs and sims will still go to work they just won't advance in their careers which is what we want because we only want these sims to advance when we are actively playing them we don't want story progression to take the wheel unless you do want story progression to take the wheel then don't put them in a rotational cast this is make this makes it so that they are in like a stasis and they won't do anything when you are not actually actively playing them and this will only apply to households that you specifically want this to be on this is not the whole entire town we're then going to come down here to cast priority and we are going to set this to a five this just makes it so that it takes priority over any other cast you have in your game next we're going to come death allow aging which will turn off aging for the sims that you put in this cast just turn that to false next we're going to come down to the household section and we are going to allow household move as family and we're going to turn that to false and right below that it's going to say household allow move solo you're also going to turn that one to false so these two will both be on false now you kind of make sure that it says false there we're then going to come down here to the money section money allow inventory management we're going to set that to false here and then we're going to come down next to personality this one will only be relevant if you play with story progression personalities which i do so i'm going to change this personality allow occult change you're going to turn that to false here next on the list we are going to come down to pregnancy and there's going to be a couple of things here we have to change in pregnancy because pregnancy is one of those things that you have to put up a lot of fail safes in order to make sure that sims don't get knocked up or adopt or whatever so we're going to come to pregnancy allow adoption we're going to set that to false here next one we are going to do is pregnancy allow can be pregnant we're going to turn that to false out that, that one is right below the adoption one and then lastly in the pregnancy section we are going to go pregnancy allow participation and we are going to turn that to false here all right we only have three more things to change so push allow skills is going to be set to false which means your sims will not gain skills if you want them to gain skills when you're not actively playing them um and they're you're putting them in this cast then you can just leave this on true and they'll learn skills and stuff but i personally really like to micromanage my families that i'm playing rotationally and by the way you're only going to have this if you have story progression skills module you're not going to have this um if you do not have that module which goes along with story progression so just a little heads up next we're going to come down here to romance allow and we're going to set that to false this is a really big one if you don't want your sims to get in romantic relationships when you're not playing them uh definitely turn this to false if you do want them to get romantic relationships when you're not playing them but they're still in this cast then you just turn this to true last but not least we have two more and this these two are going to both require a progression skill module so i'm going to come down here to skill allow false and then after i turn skill allow false i'm going to go skill allow harvest which will make it um so that sims don't harvest like crops and stuff on their property i'm pretty sure that's what that means so skill allow harvest and skill allow f are both on false okay so those are all the settings so th what this will do is this will make it so sims don't advance in careers they will not age they won't get in romantic relationships that is going to be left up to you when you inevitably play them now 
if i leave it like this right now this is not applied to any sims in the entire neighborhood no sims in my neighborhood right now have this rotational play cast on them so you have to manually add the families you want to play rotationally to this rotational cast does that make sense like it, it, sitting in here it's not going to do anything it's not going to because it, the only way that this will automatically sort sims into it is if you have cast automatic set to true which we don't we want that on false we want that on false because we want to manually add sims to this cast i hope that makes sense okay so we are are going to put the inactive households that we want to be that we want to play into this rotational cast that we just created so you know i have my sunset valley rotational play i have like however many i have like six different sims that i've decided that we are going to play and oh my god fiona looks so busted up in base game sims 3 i never realized that so let's say i want to play in addition to the single mom's household let's say i want to play agnes crumple bottom across the street here so what i would do then is i'm going to click on agnes Agnes's either her front door or if I know her family obviously I can click on the map tag here I'm going to just left click on her her map tag I'm going to go Enros I'm going to go story progression and I am going to come down here to household options and under household options at the top there's going to be cast manual I'm going to click on that and hit the blue check mark and then I'm going to come down here and find rotational play you know that cast that we just set up and I'm going to sort Agnes into that cast so now whenever we go to play Agnes eventually in the time that we spent playing the single mom's household so let's say I play the single mom's household for four days for the next four sim days in that four sim days span Agnes will not advance at all or anything in her career she won't find love she won't get married she won't have babies yada 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 she won't gain skills all right so let's say you know it's four days later I've played the single moms for four days now and i'm ready to move on to agnes what do i do with the single mom's household let's say i you know i feel when i got job promotions um uh, maybe molly had another baby i know her hair is really messed up i don't i think it's because i have default replacements let's say river graduated high school i have all of this progress with the single mom's household and i want to make sure that they do not move or, or advance at all like that so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna do the same thing that i just did to agnes crumple bottom across the street here i'm gonna click on the single mom's household i'm gonna go enros i'm gonna go story progression household options and come back down here to cast manual and this is for right before you rotate off the household this is not while you are playing them this is just before you just want to switch so this i would do this if i was you know four days out of playing the single mom's household and i was about to go and switch to agnes's family this is when i would put the single moms in a rotational cast so i would go down to household options cast manual obviously rotational play and boom they are now in a rotational cast so now that they are all set what i can do is actually i can go edit town just continue and then i can switch over to agnes's oopsie i can switch over to agnes's family so i'm going to ch go choose household and we are going to now play agnes crumble bottom well if you guys remember you know four days ago when i was on day one of playing with the single moms i put agnes in that rotational cast right so in order for agnes oh she has a default hair replacement on that's interesting okay cool sorry i got distracted i just installed these default hair replacements so i'm like a little shocked when i see a sim with one on <laughs> so agnes right now like say i had her go up to another male sim in town uh she would not be able let me let me show you guys let's just have her i'm just gonna add um not vj he's a teen let's add nick alto to the family right now if i add nick alto who is for some reason in a group if i add him to the family let me teleport him over and i have and i click on him with our household there will be no romantic interaction that's because i still have that rotational cast that disallows pregnancy disallows romance disallows sims gaining skills disallows them to advance in their careers i still have that on so what i need to do is i need to take agnes's family out of that cast so i'm going to go back onto her little map tag here or you can click on the front door i'm going to go enros story progression household options manual and i'm going to take off the rotational play cast i'm going to take her out of it and it's going to say a negative one next to it now say i go back into the household and i click on nick alto here she will now be able to do romantic stuff with him if she gets her ass out of this chair and he gets his ass out of the chair and there we go so now i have the romantic in interactions and romantic menu popping up now if you go down to your sims aging and 
and it says days until aging up never but you just took them out of the rotational cast you have to give the game a second to catch up um so the reason why it says never by the way is because in that rota a rotational cast settings menu that we did earlier we did death allow aging we set that to false so that means sims won't age at all um but you know as long as you take the sim out of the cast uh when you go to play them the aging will be all fine like well it'll it'll go back it'll fix itself in like a couple of sim hours it's not like that for the rest of the gameplay by the way so once again let's say that the single mom's household is household one and let's say agnes's household is household two so when we are ready to leave household two and return to playing household one just before switching you're going to put household two agnes's family back into the rotational cast and then you know after switching take household one out of the cast and play forward kind of like how a bookmark functions like when you go into reading a book you have the bookmark and you take the bookmark out you continue reading and then when you're done with the book for the day you put the bookmark back in that's exactly how a rotational cast functions in this industry so if you have any questions about rotational cast because it can be kind of confusing you just let me know in the comment section below and it's yeah i can i can also link the nros story progression um rotational cast settings page in the description box if you are interested in learning more number two that i have on how to spice up your gameplay is moving towns now yes this is a lot easier said than done but with the use of either enros traveler or enros porter take your pick and I'll get into the differences between those in just a second here. It makes this process really easy. So let's say, you know, I, I've, I've been playing Agnes's family for a couple of weeks now. I'm feeling kind of bored of Sunset Valley. I want to move to either like Bridgeport or Appaloosa Plains or, you know, any other world like that. Then I would recommend moving your family because you have, you know, you have a lot of you know, business here that you uh, already handled maybe your sim has an entire family maybe they want to move towns yada 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 so uh here here is here is what i would recommend to you if you want to keep all of your relationships in town like let's say agnes you know she has maybe a boyfriend here or she has cousins or you know she obviously has her sister and, and everything um i want her to keep those relationships right so what i would recommend in that situation or that scenario is i would recommend you to use enros traveler what enros traveler does is it allows you to move your sims via the phone and keep the relationship so if I come down here to the phone and click real estate and travel services, I go move to a new town. When I do this now, it's going to use Enrolls Traveler's sort of like method that they do it. And it is going to keep all of Agnes's relationships. It's going to keep all of her skills. It's going to keep all of her inventory items when she moves to that brand new town. Not just her family relationships, by the way. This is for people also that are just her friends. And I think it even saves acquaintances so even if she has some acquaintances in here it'll save those despite them not being her friend now the caveat to using enrolls traveler you may say well this is great i can keep all my my friends my relationships uh, my my skills everything like that well there's caveat to this because let's say you know maybe i move agnes to bridgeport and then i play four sim weeks in bridgeport and then i'm bored of bridgeport again and i move her to appaloosa plains i play four weeks in appaloosa you know I, I keep switching from town to town well guess how much bloat you'll get in your game because it is an insane amount the game has to account for all of these relationships and then if i were to move her into bridgeport i would have to account for all of those relationships and then if i you know move for her to abaloosa plains and then it has to account for those so think about all of the game bloat um, that you'll have in your relationships panel now uh if you're wondering how it shows or displays these sims it does it in like the basic sort of um the sort of way you know when you go to like Champlain sims or china or whatever in the sims 3 and then you know you return back to sunset valley or whatever town you're playing in you know how it has those grayed out sims in the bottom of your relationships panel that's how it will display you know cornelia fiona blah blah blah, blah. like all, all the sims you've met that's how it'll display them so that is for enros traveler let's say you know uh, i don't want all the game bloat in my game i really want to preserve my save i want to make sure that it runs well you know a couple a month or so down the line if i'm still playing this family well then to you i would recommend recommend using enros porter now enros porter i have a video um on my uh, st my story progression like giant mod overview with timestamps so please go and watch that i'm not going to show you how to do that because i showed it in that video um i'll just tell you what enros 
Porter does. So Anaros Porter, I would say, is like the more abrupt and like kind of like ripping your sim out of the town. It's not as nice as Enros Traveler. You know, with Enros Traveler, you come down here to the phone, you go to move to a new town, you get the nice like little animation, your sim picks up. I think they carry like a suitcase or whatever in their hands. Um, it's a really nice animation. It's a really nice system. Well, this, what this will do is this is all done through the use of mod menus. So uh, once again, I'm not going to explain how to do it in this video. I have a whole other, you know, hour and 30 minute video explaining all other Enros mods. Please go watch that. But this is done through the use of menus. Um, It uses the saved family bin and edit town. Basically, I would export the crumple bottom family. They would show up in here. I would go to my main menu and I would start a brand new town. And then I would load up that town and then I would just plop Agnes back down. So this is different because this does not save Agnes's relationship relationships um so for example if i were to place her in the brand new town of bridgeport and i use Enros porter people are not going to show up on her family tree in fact cornelia it won't even show that she has a sister because doing it this way removes all of their relationships all of their family friendships and all that sort of stuff so that is the caveat uh the reason why people like to use enros porter over enros traveler is because it does not create game bloat and game lag like enros traveler does when you're moving from town to town because once again enros traveler stores all of your sims relationships whereas enros porter is a really like abrupt and kind of like harsh way of moving your sim from town to town albeit a healthier way to move your sims so those are the two options but i think that moving to a brand new town adds a lot of like spice and fun into your game so i'd recommend doing that if you are in need of a little bit of change and i gave you you know the enros traveler enros porter take your pick whatever you want to do um and if you choose enros porter just go watch my enros mods video because that's not where i show how to do it so my third thing on the list and this is kind of like a um maddie what are you talking about sort of moment but my third thing on this list and this is seriously what i do is i highly recommend so for me when i'm playing leprosy style and once again to reiterate what leprosy style means it means that every new generation i add the next expansion pack and that was re released in chronological order so for example um i would play the base game sims 3 for a little while and then i would add world adventures on because world adventures came out the first expansion pack in chronological order and then after you know i played world adventures a little bit i would add ambitions and so on and so forth in that order now i didn't do this in the beginning but i have started doing it recently so what i'll do is i'll actually come here to the sims wiki and let's say you know i'm playing the sims 3 ambitions i'm gonna go and type in the sims 3 ambitions on the wiki the sims wiki and what this will do is this will bring up literally things that i didn't even know about uh the sims 3 ambitions and what I'll do is I'll come down here to features and what this does is it shows every new feature that was added in the expansion pack now here's the thing when you play the sims 3 you know it's it's been like what 12 years since the sims 3 released and every single expansion pack has come out there probably isn't many of us nowadays that played with each new expansion that was released like that's just not realistic thinking so when you have every single expansion pack in the sims 3 kind of thrown into one big pot and you're playing all at the same time you may not know you know certain things came from certain expansion packs for example did you guys know that inventing tattooing yes tattoos came with the sims 3 ambitions isn't that interesting like i would have thought that they came with like late night or something like that but no tattoos actually came with the sims 3 ambitions so things like that you know you can kind of pick and choose um and kind of like get the experience that people were getting way back in 2009 when these expansion packs were just being released one by one that's what's so great about leprosy style is you're kind of you're kind of getting to play like how they did way back in 2009 when these were coming out in chronological order right so what i'll do is i'll come here to the wiki and i'll see everything that was put into the game and i'll kind of put things in my mind that i want to make sure that I hit in that generation so for example i really don't play that much with sim bots but i know that sim bots were added with the sims 3 ambitions via inventing so servios are back as sim bots along with a time machine now this sounds like
like I could do like a whole thing with inventing and make like a Simbot. And it's kind of interesting because maybe like the Simbot, because I don't think Simbots age in Sims 3. Um, that can be like, you know, it can last all the way until Gen 10 or however many generations you decide to do. So it's things like this, you know, I'm not just saying the Sims 3 ambitions, but maybe I go late night. Late night is probably one of my most favorite expansion packs for the Sims 3. I have a hard time picking exactly what my favorite expansion pack is, but late night is for sure up there because I think it adds so much cool stuff. So for example, let's see, um, new traits were added, shy and star quality. Well, I can have maybe like a shy star quality sort of sim, like, you know, maybe they want to be a celebrity and maybe they have what it takes, but their shyness kind of gets in the way of them being a celebrity, things like that. Maybe I could play with piano, bass, drums, mixology. So what I, this is, this is, you know, you don't have to just be playing late night or ambitions. I'm recommending, you know, maybe you want to play into the future, but you don't know what came with into the future. Well, I would highly recommend going and every time you decide to play a new expansion pack in the sims 3 i would highly recommend going to the sims wiki and just giving it like a quick once over in in seeing things you know if maybe things that you want to hit on um in that specific generation and this can really keep the game really fresh because once again when you when you play with all expansion packs at one time it's kind of overwhelming and you end up playing like the same you know fa maybe family story um storyline every single time but this really adds a element to the game that's like really fun and, and you can play with things that you really never do so highly recommend doing this uh, i have started doing this in every single generation and i think it really helps getting across to the audience like what came with what expansion pack so my next recommendation to you guys would be to do like a teen pregnancy or like a teen household storyline so the way that you make a teen only household in sims 3 you'll need NROS master controller and NROS master controller integration. Integration is a sub mod or like a add on mod for master controller. Highly recommend. And then if you want to move teens out by themselves, like if you want to split a teen off from their household, and let's say you already have a teen in a household with their parents, you'll need NROS mover. So those three mods will allow you to have a teen only household in the Sims 3. But what I will do is I'm going to make Jeanette Steele here. And this is the child of jamie jolina and christopher Steele. by the way she is stunning i did not change up any of her facial features just added a little bit of cc on her she is so cute so if i were to go in right now i what i would do with miss jeanette is i would have her maybe do like a runaway teen sort of thing in the beginning maybe have her buy like a plot of land or something um but then you know maybe i'll go in and have her romance like one of the alvi brothers or if you wanted to get her pregnant from the get-go you can actually use master controller to pollinate sims even if they're teens so i'll show you how to do that here in just a second so let's say the storyline in my head is that jeanette was attending the sunset valley high school for a while she's been dating vj alvi and you can actually do all of this with cheats by the way like you can cheat relationships and everything where the hell is vj i just rang jamie jolina's doorbell which is weird or if i clicked on her house because this is like the other half of jeanette's genetics it's, it's just weird to me i don't know where the alvi family lives let me go to master control Controller. we'll go to sim we'll go focus and then i'm gonna hit the x and then you can do this on any sim by the way so vj lv so he lives or he's currently over here right now so i'm gonna teleport jeanette over just so i can get her pregnant and by the way this would be like i would consider this setup to my storyline that i am trying to tell so i wouldn't really consider this cheating like this is this is all set up for my storyline so i'm gonna open up the interior of their household and there's actually a mod that is called pregnancy controller for the sims 3 and what it'll do is when i click on jeanette you see how it says pregnancy options and then it says get jeanette still pregnant i don't think you can do this with teens so you have to do this with young adults or above so if you want to play with young adult and get them pregnant like on the spot you could do that um but in order to do this with teens you'll have to actually use master controller so here is mr vj over here let's say that for the storyline i'm trying to tell for this game save i am going to have jeanette get pregnant maybe they met at like school or something so i'm going to click on jeanette i'm going to go enrolls master controller i'm going to go to basic and then pollinate here there's a pollinate button it's gonna say select criteria donor i'm just gonna hit the x and then it's gonna give me like every single sim in town so let's say i want once again vj alvi and it says jeanette Steele has been successfully pollinated so um what i can do if you have that 
pregnancy controller you can't get teenagers pregnant with this pregnancy controller but you can speed up their pregnancy so let's say i want to start her labor right now so she's going to give birth uh on the on the side of his sidewalk and yes um the pregnancy closed there we go so now we can see it had to, it took a second there to update god that outfit is so tragic so once again this is all set up to my storyline so i really do not consider this like cheating because this is like actually me just trying to set up my game and get the storyline underway i just realized how much Ileana Langrock and Tori Kimura look um they have like the same exact hair and almost the same exact face that is so creepy I've literally never noticed that before in my life their outfit is almost the exact same I don't know if they have like any storylines or anything like that together but that's so weird I wonder if they know each other like in base game sims 3 it's strange so VJ actually just went in the doctor's office which is really interesting or the hospital with Jeanette so <laughs> very cute okay so she had a baby boy by the way the way that i have all traits for all ages i forget what the mod is called but i'll leave it in the description box below i featured it before i'm gonna name him howard because why not so anyway uh that is where i would kickstart my gameplay like she had her baby uh the storyline is all set up to be in motion and yeah that is where i would basically start to play the game so i think a teen pregnancy can really add like a lot and having a teen move out on their own um now it's up to you guys like i'm not trying to put ideas in your mind maybe you just want to split the teen off from their household uh maybe you want to do the teen pregnancy route it's up to you but i would highly recommend adoption also is a really good way to like spice up your game it can add a lot of flavor and stuff like that so yeah um i gave you guys the tools and the arsenal to do it and uh go ahead and knock yourself out Decide what you want to do she's gonna throw her baby on the ground now very nice now this last one is kind of one that i never do but it is such like a it's such a basic and simple thing to do um so my recommendation to you guys would be to play with personalities of sims that you have never played with before so for example i am a very family centric player i don't really like to venture outside of that but um maybe i want to come over here and this is obviously in sense of value you can also make your own family like say i want to make a uh, really mean sim i don't tend to play with mean sims a lot just because i love like the family dynamic um but i could play with mean sims even a lot of people tell me that they don't play with occults and i love occults in the sims i think they're so fun so it is really like a new way to play maybe you play like a fairy storyline or in you know, like a genie storyline how often do you guys use genies in your game because i like i never use genies in my game but um they're really fun to play and they have like a lot of cool abilities so i think it'd be so fun to do like a genie that is like basically don lothario and like sleeps around town and then he has like a bunch of genie kids like that just sounds so fun to me and i kind of I kind of want to play it now i would also recommend if you don't want to like make your own sim hitting the randomize button a couple of times if you have enros error trap it's going to give you error traps maybe but um just you can hit like the randomize button oh my god he has sliders on it got so messed up so maybe if you have sliders uh take them out of your game before you hit the randomize button because you might get something like this i don't know what happened to his chest but um i'm very scared of it i literally think i broke my game with the with the hitting the randomize button with sliders maybe not um my my thing is still blinking though i'm i don't know what's going on right now okay so if you are going to hit the randomize button make sure you take the sliders out of your game because i hit the randomize button and i got sucking cast so um yeah just the word to the wise okay <laughs> learn from my mistakes anyways guys that is going to do it for me today i hope you did enjoy this video i have a lot of other videos of this sort of caliber like my top five favorite sims 3 mods i also have my infamous enros story progression and all the other enros mod guides so there is much more of me to go around if you are interested i stream every single saturday at 7 p.m we play the sims 2 we play the sims 3 if you can't make it that's fine i also upload my vods of said stream i hope you guys did enjoy if this helped you please leave a thumbs up or if you are even more generous please subscribe i upload four videos a week relating to some sort of sims content whether that be sims 2 or sims 3 so i will catch you guys all in my next video and peace out